Why study American history? Students often wonder why we study American history and I think they deserve an explanation. A good place to begin is to ask the question, what makes the United States unique? As it turns out, several things. If we look at the poem, The Great Colossus, inscribed on the Statue of Liberty, we find it ends with these words. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. The key words here are wretched refuse. The Statue of Liberty has been called America's welcome mat. And who does it welcome? Refuse. The Spanish translation is basura or garbage. Essentially, this nation of only 4% of the world's population has a welcome mat that says welcome garbage. People who are thriving in their homelands do not leave for an unknown destination. They leave as a last resort. The second point about American history is that this is the first country in modern history founded on the principle of self-government. It was founded on an idea. That may not seem like much until you remember that all the other governments were founded on geography, a king, a parliament, a dictator, an emperor, a foreign invading power, a religion, anything but the idea of self-government. This is not a concept universally embraced. During our own civil war in 1861, when the very existence of self-government was in doubt, the lower classes in England were rooting for the North where many of their friends and family had migrated while the upper classes rooted for the South. The reason was that many in Europe wanted nothing more than to see this experiment in self-government fail, particularly those who were the heirs to privilege. The third point you need to remember is that the United States embraces what I call management by crisis. An example of this is that until World War II, we had no standing army. We would declare war and only then create an army and navy and build the factories to manufacture weapons of war. That meant we often did very poorly while we geared up for war. We are getting better, but America does not change until it faces a crisis. For us to declare independence in 1776, we were in a crisis. When we wrote and ratified the Constitution in 1787, we were facing a crisis. When America squared off in 1861 with a war that killed 630,000, it was the result of a crisis. When so much of American government was transformed during the Great Depression, it was because of a crisis. When civil rights were expanded in the 1950s and 1960s, it was because leaders like Rosa Parks, Martin Luther King Jr., and John Lewis had created a crisis. It was a good and necessary crisis, but a crisis nonetheless. Each generation of Americans faced its own unique challenges and turned over to their children a better world. The reason we study history is to prepare for great challenges. When you study American history, you learn about the courage, creativity, and determination that define past generations. You learn to think critically. Let's now review all of this. The U.S. is only 4% of the world's population peopled with the garbage of the earth and we transform ourselves when we absolutely have to because of some crisis. Yet, as you will learn in a theme I repeat many times, the United States is not a nation of extraordinary people, but a nation of ordinary people who did extraordinary things. We aren't better than anyone else, but we certainly are unique. Finally, and this is the most important point, while we celebrate America's creation in 1776, it can truly be said that America is in a state of continuous creation. Each generation creates this country anew on the shoulders of prior generations. We cannot create our future without understanding our past. Students who take American history from me 
tell me that this is the most exciting class they ever had. I hope that is your experience too and I hope you enjoy watching these videos on U.S. history and reading, discussing, and sharing what you learn about American history. A history not of extraordinary people, but a history of ordinary people who did extraordinary things.